The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Everybody, my name is Reverend Steve. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, uh, father of four point five children. The point five. Let's let's break down the math. I have Emerald, and I and she's what sixteen, going on thirty. I have Isabella. She is eleven, going on twenty eight. I have Maxwell. He is five. And adorable. I have Eleanor. She is 11 and a half months old. Her birthday is coming up soon. She's 11 months old. <clears throat> and then I have Amber. She's what, 16? Is Amber 16? 15? 15. 15. Yeah. Yeah. Emerald's 15. Amber's 15. Amber, we, we have guardianship of. We, we own the rights to her. I guess is 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 the right. We haven't adopted her, but she's not just someone who's living here. So we have the rights to the movie of her life, basically. So she's the point five and not the eleven month old. There's a lot of confusion sometimes over that. Anyway, this is not a regular episode of the Pope on Film this week. Uh, I need a week off. Again, I'm not recording video, so stop, Maxwell. This is not a regular episode of the Pope on Film. This is a special edition for various reasons. The primary reason why we're not doing an episode this week is just, I'm not ready for the podcast. It's just, just do not rub ham on my podcast notes, Maxwell. Hi. Of all the sentences I thought I would say today, Maxwell, do not rub your ham on my podcast notes was not one of them. That that was odd. You you can still eat it there, just don't rub your ham all over my podcast notes. <clears throat> so, I, I, I'm just not ready. I, I've had a very busy, bizarre, strange, weird week. Um... I work in the receiving area of a major retail store and on Mondays are my light days because I get very small deliveries and I do a lot of writing for the podcast on Monday, but I lost my podcast notes for all of Monday and most of Tuesday and that pushed me back as far as the amount of writing that I do. I always say I want to do a bunch of writing at home, but I have kids and I have a wife and I have family life just makes it so that I'm not able to do a lot of writing at home. A lot of the writing I do is at work. Just don't tell anyone I work with. But a lot of the writing I do is at work. Kids, 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 kids. Look, you're both pretty. Now, can you leave each other alone? Okay, Bella, stop threatening Maxwell. Maxwell, stop being easily threatened. Eleanor, stop beating up Bella and Maxwell. And Steve, just be a better parent, I guess. Just Steve, just keep being awesome, I guess. Keep being beautiful. Guys, leave each other alone. Bella, what are you doing? What are you doing? Leave him alone. Play your game. Go play your game. Uh... 
So I didn't get a lot of writing done this week. I, I lost my podcast notes for a while. And then on Monday and Wednesday of this past week, I had a, two huge field trips. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club of N- Norman, Oklahoma came. And so on Monday, I had a field trip that I ran with a group of about 17 preteens. And let me tell you something. Um, if you want to feel old, just hang out with a bunch of preteens. Really makes you feel. Really makes you feel. I'm, I'm giving them a tour of the store, and I'm, I'm trying to make it fun and cool, and just really makes you feel not cool. I guess I don't know. Started talking about Hamilton to the kids, and they they had no idea what it was. And I'm like, you kids are like 11, 12, 13 years old. You guys don't know what Hamilton is? I thought everyone your age knew what Hamilton was. And one of the kids is like, isn't that that play about all those old people? And that just depressed me. They claimed to know who the Beatles were. I thought that I think I still think they're lying. Um, one kid asked me if we had any books on fidget spinners, like. You know what? Fucking no. 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 Fucking books on fidget spinners. Like, was it going to be a one page book? You know? Like, fuck you. Shitty little kid. Anyway. Then uh, on Wednesday, I had a huge, massive story time, and, and I had like 60 or 70 kids show up, and they were low-income kids, so these are kids who have never been into a bookstore before, and, and they, they've never been into our store before, and they, they just didn't know what was up, and it was difficult, you know, a lot of just bratty kids. I think I did a really good job considering, but yeah, and then this week... Uh, is also a busy week for us because my wife went back to school. She's taking a bunch of classes and it's off and it, it, most of the classes she's taking are on campus. So it, there's just the difficulty and drama, of, you know, making sure kids are taken care of and, 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 logistics there's a lot of logistics involved in my wife going back doing summer school so that's stressful and then coming home and you know i've had a long day at work and i'm exhausted and i had a field trip and i just can't wait to come home and just spend time with the family and then i come home and then my two teenage girls they're at a college a local crappy college doing a college preparedness thing that they do every summer uh, here in Oklahoma called Upward Bound, preparing kids for college. So my my teens are gone. Bella half of the time is at Nana's and uh, Maxwell may or may not be here because Maxwell might be at Nana's too. It's just, I come home and it's just the baby and mommy and then half of the time mommy's asleep so it's just you know, you Natasha's going back to school, and that's great, and it also sucks. But anyway, there's also... Okay, there's also the fact that this uh, past weekend, our dog died. And, And I wanted to talk about this on this special edition so that I wouldn't have to really talk about it at length on the podcast because that's just going to be awkward for me. So we had a dog. Her name was Joanna. We got her a long time ago, before Bella was even born. We had Joanna. Her name was Joanna because there's been a long-standing rule in the house that I have very sensitive uh, asthma and breathing problems and allergies, and we can't have pets. But also, I'm married, so my opinion doesn't matter, so we always have pets. So, I get to name the pet. That's always been the thing. That's how we had a dog named Grandpa. 
and it was the greatest name for a dog ever because you heard wonderful things like somebody locked grandpa up in his cage grandpa pooped on the couch again grandpa peed on the couch again it, somebody get me the paper i'm gonna hit grandpa with it bad grandpa bad grandpa somebody put grandpa's leash on him and walk grandpa who's gonna walk grandpa it, it was it was wonderful uh so i so we got a dog i wanted to name the dog sweeney todd the demon dog of fleet street but uh baby emerald was having uh pronunciation problems and couldn't say sweeney maxwell come here can you say sweeney todd sweet todd no, you're just you're trying to Sweeney say it weird. Todd. You know what? You know what? It let's it in order to 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 showcase uh, some possible pronunciation problems. You remember the nuts song? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not for nuts. I'm not for nuts. Nuts are delicious. 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 Okay, sing the rest. I'm not for nuts. I'm not for nuts. Nuts are delicious. Nutritious. That's very good. That's very good. Thank you, Maxwell. So, so instead of naming the dog Sweeney, we named the dog Joanna, which is from which is another character from Sweeney Todd. It was always a, a an occasional thing when we would go outside to try and find the dog, and the dog was just way out digging a hole or or just laying down under a tree and didn't want to move. So. We would start singing the Joanna song from Sweeney Todd. I see you, Joanna. So that was a regular occurrence. Maxwell, Maxwell. So Joanna died this past weekend. She was exactly 12 years old. She died on her birthday, which is convenient I don't know uh, I always treated Joanna like crap so because I, I I never want animals I never I don't like animals I can't breathe around a large amount of animals and it's just I don't want animals and we shouldn't have animals and we all agree we can't have animals but we had a goddamn dog and cat in the house. We still have a cat occasionally in the house. And so. So Joanna died and that's very sad. Um, I'm not that sad about it, actually. And the reason is why I had. I said goodbye in a really good way that makes me feel less sad about Joanna's passing because Joanna for the last week has been having a hard time walking, having a hard time going out to the backyard. And then she, we would have a hard time bringing her back into the house. And, you know, a, a couple of days before she died, like, you know, we would go to the backyard to bring her into the house and she would just be laying under a tree and just like, I can't move. I don't want to move we would have to kind of pick her up and sort of carry her back into the house. So the last two days that she was alive, she was just, she couldn't move. She could barely move. She could move her head, but she was just kind of laying there, not eating and not drinking water. So we were drinking, giving her water and feeding her and making sure she was comfortable. And we were going to take her to the vet on Monday we kind of sort of knew that we would probably have to put her down. So that was sad. But Sunday and it, the, the vet places weren't open on Sunday. There was one vet place that was open on Sunday, but it would have cost us an arm and a leg. And also they they have one of those electronic billboards out at the front of the animal hospital and it's constantly saying anti it for it, it 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 became political over the past couple of years and even though it's like a vet it 
the electronic billboard outside of it is constantly saying what has been constantly saying these nasty things about Obama and these nasty things about Hillary and these nasty things about locking her up and these horribly dumb things about Trump giving us a brighter future. And it's just fuck you. I'm not going to go to your fucking place. You're a vet. Why? Why do I know the the political leanings of a fucking veterinary hospital? That's fucking ridiculous. You're not a person. You know, so we were waiting until Monday and Sunday night. The whole weekend was kind of depressing, but the middle of the day, Sunday, the kids had all had gone to Nana's and the teens had gone back to class. So it was just me and Natasha and the baby. And so we are hanging out watching YouTube videos. We decided to go to bed, but right before we're about to lay down and go to bed, the baby freaking poops, so we need to change her diaper, and we're going to use a, a paper diaper. We we usually use cloth diapers. We're going to use a paper one, but they're all in the van, and I have to go and get a, get up and put pants on and go get a freaking diaper. So I, I do that. I put pants on. I go outside, go into the van, open up the van, get a diaper, come back out, and Joanna has lifted her head up which and is looking at me with, like, this sad face. And, and I'm, and, and I think, okay, I'm not going to have a lot of times like this. And besides, it looks like she wants to get up to come to me. And that's a big deal. So it's like midnight. No, it's like 11 at night. So I, I go over to Joanna and I kneel beside her and she immediately lays her head on my legs and she lets out a big breath, like, like she's happy so I just pet her and I want to tell her hey it's okay you're going to be fine everything's going to be fine and I know she won't understand me because she's, she's a fucking dog so I try and think of the only thing that, I, that she will understand so I just I good dog I just stick to good dog and I'm petting her and good dog and we love you you're a good dog you're a good doggy and I do that for like a minute and I stand up I go back to the bedroom and I lay down on the floor and I'm about to pass out. And now I have to throw out the diaper. And I'm like, ah, oh, god damn it. So I stand up, I, I get the diaper, I throw it outside. I come back and she has lifted her head up again. And so I knelt down beside her again and I, I, I pet her under her chin and I pet her on the head and told her she was a good dog and that we all loved her and that she was a part of the family and we loved her very much. And then I went to bed and my wife woke me up at around 1.30 because the dog had died, passed in her sleep while she was sleeping. And the fact that I got that wonderful time literally like an hour before she died to let her know that we all loved her and that and that she was a good dog, that made me feel that makes me feel a whole lot better at the fact that she died because she died happy. You know, she died knowing that we all loved her and she died in her sleep, which means she wasn't like in pain or anything like that. Like it was it was a, like I'm sad that she died, but she died in a really good way. She died in her sleep peacefully, knowing that we all love her. And that's good. That's very good. I, 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 I wish I die that way. I, I either wish I die that way. Or I, I wish that I die in an elephant stampede. Or in space, fighting space Nazis on the moon. Those are the ways I hope to die. Space Nazis on the moon. It's probably like, like my leading way to die right now. Anyway, it's not all depressing because we actually have have two dogs Joanna and Sketchy we named her Sketchy because she's incredibly small and incredibly shaky other possible names for the dog could be meth head or crack addict that's how that's how tiny and shaky this dog is the dog could either be named shaky cracky meth head or Michael J. Fox Either one of those names would be appropriate for this frickin' dog. The, 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 the dog 
chose us in like the weirdest way imaginable. We were outside about to go into the car to leave somewhere in our house in Sacramento. And suddenly from afar, I see a dog running full speed towards us. A tiny little dog, literally, who is running at full speed towards us. And I I say, guys, 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 watch out. And the dog just runs and runs right towards us. Never seen this dog before, this tiny ass little dog before. Running, 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 takes a giant freaking magical leap and lands perfectly in my young daughter Emerald's arms. And that's how we got sketchy. Sketchy was just running away from something horrible and chose us. We assume that she was running from something horrible because she has one back leg, like her back left leg or back right leg, back left leg, Sketchy's one bad leg. Back, back, yeah, I think it's back left leg that she doesn't like putting pressure on and it hurts her a little bit. And so she's always walking like with three legs instead of four. So we assume that she was beaten somehow. We tried to look for her and put signs up and yada, 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 but nobody claimed this dog, which is ridiculous because it's small and cute as hell. So uh, we assume that this dog was in a really bad situation and, and was beaten. And then we we brought it in. But when we moved to Oklahoma, the house that we were in only allowed one animal. So we were not allowed to have Joanna and Sketchy. So we kept Joanna and Sketchy went to go live with uh, Nana and Papa in their big plot of land with a bunch of other dogs. So Joanna has passed on and that's sad. But the good news is we finally get to bring Sketchy back into the house. It's going to be awkward because she's been with Nana for what, like four years, five years. And she's also been living outside And she also, I don't know when the last time was sketchy, slept inside of a house, let alone slept inside of a house with children. You know, last I remember, sketchy was a jumper. I don't know how sketchy is going to react to Eleanor, you know, to my 11 month old, let alone the fact that sketchy's never met the freaking cat. So it's all just a big question mark, but that makes that all makes us feel a little bit better about Joanna passing on. So anyway, it's been a rough ass week for me. Not getting a lot of sleep. And I just need more time to prepare for this next episode of the podcast. So I only have two and a half pages and I'm supposed to be recording the damn thing today. So it just goes to show you how far behind I am. But here is a little bit of a... um preview for our next episode of the Pope on film. We're discussing the classic comedy Kentucky Fried movie. We will also be talking about district managers. We will be talking about Batman versus Superman Dawn of Yawns. We're going to be talking about controversy. We're going to be talking about where oh, uh, I'm bringing back the beloved A reoccurring bit, Steve's Unpopular Opinions. I'm going to be talking about how I hate the Wonder Woman movie and how by hating the Wonder Woman movie, I am fighting sexism. Hopefully it'll be controversial because, you know, our show should people should be more outraged by this show. I don't know why they're not. It's weird. We will also be talking about something very important. I can't stress how important this is. Squirrel washing. We're going to be talking about how to wash squirrels. Very important. Oh, also, we're going to be talking about communism. Apparently in Cuba, they just kill, they just kill and rape Christian women, which is weird because I always assumed that they just drank and smoked cigars and danced in Cuba. But no, they just go around killing every and raping every Christian in the world. So good to know, you know. Anyway, next week, brand new episode of the Pope on Film, episode 128. Very excited about that. And uh, thank you for listening to this uh, special and somewhat depressing episode of the Pope on Film. Maxwell, can you stop making fart noises while I'm recording this special episode of the podcast? Thanks, Max.
Burp, burp, be burp, burp. So we hope you'll join us next week for an all new episode of the Pope on film. Until then, thanks for listening and we'll see you next week. You godless heathens. You douche waffles. You, you poopy heads. Poopy heads. Thanks. <laughs> do, 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 do. Do, 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 do